Hi everyone and welcome again to the Effective Teaching Podcast. I'm your host Dan but before we begin I wanted to let you know that I'm currently giving away a full chapter of my book. The book is Work Less, Teach More, How to Be an Effective Teacher and Live a Life That You Love. Now the chapter from the book that I'm going to be giving away is called What Really Matters. The chapter is all about how to work out which actions that we take have the largest impact on what we do. I'm not focusing here on teaching strategies like what Hattie does. I'm actually focusing on your day-to-day activities that we do as teachers every day. If you are interested and want to grab the free chapter, you can head over to teacherspd.net slash worthless. You'll learn more about the book there and you can also grab that free chapter and start to apply the things to help you get your time back so that you can actually invest it in things that really matter to you and allow you to live a life that is enjoyable. Now today in this episode I'm actually going to talk a little bit about a small section from this chapter. I want to talk to you about a thing that's called the Eisenhower's Matrix and how you can use it to increase your effectiveness as a teacher. The Matrix is very much founded on the idea that not all tasks are equal, some have greater impact than others, and some are more urgent than others. So the way the matrix works, you essentially draw up a square that you then divide into four quadrants. In one quadrant, you want to write urgent and important. In the other, you want to write urgent and not important. Another one will need to be not urgent and important. And the final one is not urgent and not important. Now you can draw this up on a whiteboard or on some paper or something, but you need it to be large enough so that you can then use it in the process that I'm about to describe. So as you use the matrix, what I want you to do is sit down and make a list of all the tasks that you do as a teacher. And you can do this for your whole life and all that kind of stuff, but start by focusing on your role as a teacher. I know that the list just for that is going to be quite long, but it is worth doing. I want you to keep going until you can't think of anything else that you do. Uh, and then maybe even ask a friend about if you've missed anything. So this will include things like you know, playground duty, risk assessments, programming, classroom teaching, staff meetings that you attend, entering grades, writing reports, everything. You want to write each one of these onto their own little sticky note so that you can then take that sticky note and stick it into its relevant quadrant. Now, I want you to sticky note so that you can move things around as you think more about it, uh, rather than writing it on and having to wrap it off. So for example, you might take programming and it might go in the important slash not urgent quadrant because maybe you're not due to create programs, but maybe as you come up to report writing time, your reports are important and urgent and they go into that quadrant. So you're working out where they're going in each quadrant. The final step, once you have all of your tasks in each quadrant, is to go through and work out what you can do with each of the tasks in each of these different squares. So for example, I want you to have a look at the tasks that are neither important nor urgent and see how many of them you can not do. So I want you to essentially never do those tasks unless it is a legal requirement for your job, okay? Or unless your principal has really clearly said you have to do this. I would also encourage you to do the same process to the quadrant that says not important but urgent. So often these tasks have been made urgent by someone other than you or maybe you've personally chosen to make them urgent but if they're not important why have you done that? Often they are tasks that you can get rid of some of them. Some of them are legal things that you have to do. Other things you might also be able to delegate and organize for someone else to do for you. You then want to make sure that you look at the important but not urgent quadrant. This is probably the most important section for you to look at when you're doing this process. These tasks are important but we often never get them done. I want you to take those tasks and I want you to schedule time into your calendar or put it in your diaries for when you're going to get those tasks done and don't allow that time to get taken up by anything else because these are important and we need to prioritize them. These are often the tasks that will have the greatest impact on what we do as teachers, the greatest impact on our students, 
for the greatest impact even on us and our impact on the community that we're involved in, etc. Okay, these are the tasks that help you to develop as a teacher. Finally, make sure that you take the urgent and important tasks and put them into a to-do list that you get done first. And if you have any tasks left over from the urgent, not important, they go at the bottom of your to-do list to make sure that you get them done soon. Now the problem that you'll notice with this quadrant is that the important, not urgent category often gets neglected. In fact, many of you won't go through this process because you're too busy, but you have too many things in your urgent section that you're actually not gonna make time for this because this process is an important but not urgent task. And so we tend to neglect it. In our urgent, so in our important but not urgent category, is also where we put setting our professional development goals, uh, where doing exercise might go, and it's also where we put time with our loved ones because it is super important, but often it's not urgent. In fact, one of the things that causes things our big dramas and all those kinds of things is when we neglect this quadrant. If we neglect the important and not urgent, we are waiting for those things who, that are important to become urgent. So if we neglect our exercise and our health, we won't make that important or urgent for us, sorry, we won't make it urgent for us until something goes wrong with our health. And the same for our quality time with our family and friends. We won't actually prioritize it until it becomes urgent, when something breaks down in those relationships. But we can avoid those things by prioritizing it when it's important but not urgent. And even doing it with your reports, right? In reports, when it's not report time, they're still important but they're not urgent. And so we don't do them. And then when they become urgent, that's when we actually get them done. But if we can create time beforehand to get on top of our reports, we can actually get to report time and have very little left to do to have our reports ready for you know, our deputies and stuff for them to go out. Now, obviously, you can look broader when it comes to balancing out your life. And I would encourage you to do this, to look broader. But as you look broader at your whole life, I encourage you to do it in sections. So, you know, we talked about doing your work life already. Then break it up into your home life. You know, uh, think of all the tasks you do there in terms of your washing, your cleaning, uh, time with your family. So when do you actually spend quality time with your kids or when do you spend time you know, one-on-one with your partner when you're not interrupted by your kids or interrupted by other things. But it is important to use the process in order to remove tasks as well. You want to remove those tasks that are not important and that you do not have to do. So go through your list. I want you to delete tasks. I want you to delegate tasks. And I want you to make sure you schedule tasks into your calendar. By doing this, you will have less tasks that are urgent because doing the important non-urgent tasks means these tasks do not become urgent later. Now, if you want to see an example of a completed matrix, you can head to teacherspd.net slash 89. There is an example on the page there for you. I've also put the form on that page so that you can grab the free chapter for the book. So the book is Work Less, Teach More, How to Be an Effective Teacher and Live a Life You Love. And the chapter that you're getting for free is the chapter that's called What Really Matters. So helping you to work out what you should be prioritizing and what things you can get rid of. If you enjoyed this episode, I would love it if you could leave me a review and make sure that you subscribe so that you come back next week when I'll be talking about brown and purple cows. If you want to know what that has to do with teaching, make sure you come and listen to episode 90.